Hello friends, so once again welcome you to my channel. In this video we will see IO mapped IO and memory mapped IO. Basically what we are going to discuss is the methods of assigning addresses to the IO devices. Right. Then after that we will start performing the IO operation. First we need to identify our devices. For that we need to know their addresses. We need to know how we are assigning addresses to them. So for that, see to uh, understand that we need to see how the uh, means connection is done between CPU, memory and IO devices, right? So th basically there are three type of connections are there. One is separate buses will be there. Here bus will be a set of wires and to connect one component to the CPU, we used to have three set of wires. One is address bus, one is data bus, another is control bus. So to connect memory and IO devices, will have all these separate buses. One will for memory, one for your process, IO devices. Second one is common address bus and data bus. So we'll be having common address and data bus, but control bus will be separate for each of them. Another one is all will be common, address bus, data bus, as well as control bus. So like this, three connections are there. Based on the connections, we'll use one of the method of assigning the addresses. So first we'll see, separate buses for both memory and IO devices. So see, this side processor is there, one side memory and IO device is there. Here separate buses are there. That means address bus, data bus and control bus. We know their direction, it is unidirectional. Address is generated by the CPU towards the memory. Data can come from memory or data can go to the memory and control signal will come to the memory or may go from memory to the processor. So see, all these are applicable for IO devices also. So the direction of buses is clear. And then here in this organization, we have separate buses for each of the entity. One is memory, one is IO. But it is a costlier affair. Why? Because we have separate buses. So we need to pay for that, right? So this is a costlier method and it was used in the very early days. Then next I'm coming to the next one. In the next uh, connection, what we used to have, the address bus and data bus is common. We have only one set of lines for carrying address and one set of lines carrying your data information. But between processor and memory, one control bus is there and separate control bus is there between the CPU and the IO devices also, right? So in this one, we have common address bus. So one address will be given by the CPU. Let's say the address is say, address is say 001. 001 means what? Device number one or memory location one because it is common to both of them. So this number will appear 001 on this bus. That will be seen by the memory as well as by the your IO device also. Now the point is, see both are getting the address but who is going to respond for the data or it will take the data from the processor. That depends on your control bus. So if processor sends memory read signal, memory read signal, then 001 will represent one memory location and one read operation will be performed from this location and data will be given on the data bus here, right? And if it was suppose IO read, if it was IO read, then Device number one will respond to the read request and data will be placed on the data bus, right? This is how it works. So here the point is, address is, see whatever address comes that will go to memory as well as IO devices also. But who will respond? That will depend on what signal, control signal is there. If it is meant for memory, memory will respond. If it is meant for IO device, IO device will respond. Basically, see, in your processor, there are two signals are there. One is your read-write signal, right? Another is IO M bar signal is there. So, using these signals, we generate four signals. One is memory read, memory write. Processor used to generate this. Memory read, memory write, IO read, IO write. So, see, based on whichever signal is generated, that particular memory or the IO device is going to respond, right? And see, 
the uh, method of assigning addresses to the IO devices that we are going to use in this methodology is called as your isolated IO or IO mapped IO. Isolated IO or your IO mapped IO. Both the names are same only. Here see IO devices and memory will have separate address space. Hope you know the meaning of address space. Suppose my address space, suppose my address space, uh, my address consists of 8 bits or say let's say 4 bits. So using 4 bits, how many combinations we can have? 000, 001 till this 111. So how many combinations will come? 16 combinations will come if it is 4 bits. So using 4 bits, whatever address space we'll have, in that we will have 16 number of unique addresses. So see here in this methodology, suppose it is 4 bit address. So it is 4 bit address. This address will be generated. This address may represent a memory location or may represent one IO device, right? So one IO device may have an address 0 as well as a memory location can also have an address 0 because both of, have, both of them have your separate address space. See, this one is one for IO device. One is also suppose for your memory, right? So they will have your separate address space. So if here it is separate address space, due to that, we can use special instructions to work on with IO devices. Hope you remember in my beginning videos, when we have discussed your instructions, data movement instruction, I have mentioned a one in and out instruction in and out instruction in and out instruction can be used only when we have separate address space for your io devices and separate address space for your memory here in and using in and out instruction we can talk to the io devices in for getting something from the input device and out is for sending something to an output device so here see with in one register and the device number port number is used out also the, from where I am sending the data and then to which device I am sending that will be there. So in and out specialized instructions can be used because we have a separate address space, right? So isolated my uh, IO or your uh, memory mapped IO both means what? We have a separate address space. So here separate address space does not mean that we have separate physical wires. We have same set of wires on that address will come but depending on the control signal either memory or io device is going to respond this is clear then next i am coming to the another organization where common address data and control bus is there everything is common we are minimizing the cost right we have the single set of wires and we are sharing between memory and io devices so see here what will be there whenever see one address will be given. See, here what happens is the address will come. So, see, only uh, this control bus is also common, right? So, it will say read, right? So, whenever I see read, then I need to identify whether memory or IO device will work because common, uh, common control bus is there. So, same one signal will come that will go to memory as well as IO. So, now see who is going to respond depending on, the, it depends on the address. So see here, again I will take that example of your 4 bits. All 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 1, then 0, 0, 0, sorry, it will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. At the end, we will have 1, 1, 1. Suppose here in my, this, this is called as what? Suppose I have got 4 bit memory address. Let's say, this is an example only, 4 bit memory address. So then next combination will be what? 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So see here, in this address space, out of the whole memory address space, this suppose, here some numbers are reserved for assigning to the IO devices, right? Assigning to the IO devices. So whenever this address is appearing on the address bus and one read signal will be there, then one IO device is going to respond. But if the address is this one and read signal is there, then memory is going to respond. How do I know? Because I know that in my address space, some addresses are reserved for your IO devices. 
so whenever i see any one of those addresses then io device is going to respond other than that if some other different address is coming then memory is going to respond we have here common signal control bus data bus address bus all are common right so what will happen is here the method that we are using is called as memory mapped io from the available memory address space now you know the meaning of address space suppose 4 bit address is there so my address space consists of your 16 unique addresses out of that some are reserved for assigning to the io devices right so this is the technique now you can easily make out in this method whatever instruction we use to work on with memory same instruction we can use for your io devices because addresses are from the same address space right same address space so mostly we use move instruction to work on with memory so here also we can use move instruction to work on with your io devices so see looking at the instruction that you are using to work on with your io device you can make out whether it is isolated io or memory mapped io if i am using in and out you can make out it is isolated io but if i am using move whatever instruction i was using for memory with io devices then please understand that it is talking about memory mapped io see the word is very much meaningful memory mapped io out of memory map some part i am giving for io devices right so see here this part is clear but another point you can also see here that all the addresses whatever is possible using four bits are not used for memory right some are not utilized because at that address we are those addresses we are giving to your io devices so these addresses are not useful in my memory right so these addresses are already assigned to your io devices please do understand what i am discussing is io mapped io and memory mapped io what they are they are the methods of assigning addresses to the io devices in one case separate address space is there right but in other case different address space will be uh, same address space will be there and in another one separate address space will be there separate one is your isolated io same address space will be memory mapped io right now we need to do the comparison because this is also a very very important question the comparison between the two memory mapped io here see io devices do not have se separate address space out of memory address space only we are assigning some addresses to the io devices here see io and memory both have their own address space mem io devices may have 8 bit address memory may have 32 bit address right they have their own address space some memory space remains unutilized you can see that in the last example only out of 16 combinations some are unutilized why because they are given to io devices but here memory is completely utilized fully utilized right here same instructions can be used for memory and io devices example already i said move but here i can devise your specialized instructions to work on with memory example is in and out instruction so this uh, so these are the basic differences between memory mapped io and io mapped io right so this much is there in this video and now we know how to assign addresses to our devices then next we are ready to perform the io operations so in my next video we will be discussing about how to perform your io operation till then thank you have a great day